In every great war, some inventions never make the headlines. They don't explode, fly, or fire, yet they save lives silently. This story isn't about a weapon, but about a fabric. A piece of cloth so advanced, it could keep a man alive in the freezing Atlantic when every other material failed. This is the forgotten miracle of Ventile, the fabric that changed survival forever. Hello, historians and survivalists. Welcome back to Forgotten Survival. Today, we dive into the hidden science of wartime textiles, the quiet engineering that shaped how soldiers endured storms, jungles, and oceans. Before synthetic nylon, before Gore-Tex or polyester shells, there was a natural fabric born from necessity, light as linen, strong as canvas, and almost waterproof without a single chemical coating. It was the unsung hero of World War II survival, created not for comfort, but for the slim chance of rescue and the fight against nature itself. When World War II erupted, armies faced something industrial warfare hadn't prepared them for. The elements, rain-soaked trenches, monsoon jungles, and frozen seas destroyed gear faster than any bullet. Canvas tents and oil-treated tarps, relics from World War I, became heavy, stiff, and useless in humid or tropical climates. In the Pacific, one night of rain could ruin food, weapons, even morale. In the Arctic, moisture meant frostbite or death. Commanders needed a miracle, a fabric that wouldn't rot, mold, or absorb its own weight in water. That's when British and American engineers turned to nature itself. Their solution began with two ancient fibers, Egyptian cotton and long staple flax. These fibers had an unusual property. Woven densely enough, they resisted water on their own. But what changed everything wasn't the fiber. It was the treatment. Instead of coating the surface with wax or tar, Researchers experimented with swelling the fibers from within, creating a natural waterproofing that activated only when wet. The result was a fabric called Ventile, first woven in 1941 for RAF pilots flying over freezing seas. The brilliance of Ventile lay in its simplicity. When dry, the cotton weave was breathable and comfortable. But when the first drops of water hit, the fibers swelled tightening the weave so completely that even wind couldn't pass through. It was self-sealing, self-adjusting, and entirely organic. No coating to peel off, no oil to reapply, no smell, no stiffness. In field tests, it outperformed every synthetic of its era. For pilots shot down over the North Atlantic, those extra 15 or 20 minutes of insulation often meant the difference between life and death before rescue arrived. But Ventile didn't stay in the skies. Ground troops quickly adapted it for their own survival. In the Arctic, soldiers turned it into outer parkas and shell trousers that never froze stiff. In the desert, lighter versions blocked sandstorms and heat while remaining breathable. And in the jungle, perhaps its greatest test, Commandos fashioned ponchos and ground sheets that doubled as stretchers. When wet, it shielded from monsoon rain. When dry, it folded neatly into a pocket. It was field gear perfected by necessity. There was something uncanny about how Ventile behaved. When drenched, it stiffened, forming a natural armor. But once warmed by body heat, it softened again and moved like ordinary fabric. Ice never bonded to it, even at sub-zero temperatures. It didn't melt like nylon or crack like waxed canvas. It was quiet, a priceless advantage in combat, and it never reflected light. Every feature that modern outdoor fabrics now advertise, this 1940s material achieved first. Behind its magic was a kind of material physics rarely taught today. The cotton fibers were woven so densely, up to 400 threads per inch, that when water swelled the cellulose walls, the microscopic gaps closed completely. Instead of fighting nature, 
Ventile used nature's reaction to protect itself. In an era before polymers and laminates, this was revolutionary. It proved that the best engineering sometimes meant listening to natural materials instead of replacing them. By the end of the war, Ventile had earned a quiet reputation among those who owed it their lives. Pilots trusted it more than nylon because it wouldn't melt during cockpit fires. Arctic explorers requested it for expeditions into the unknown, and even decades later, British military flight suits and cold weather gear continued using Ventile, sometimes in dual layers for absolute protection. Yet, the public almost never heard its name. As synthetics took over the 1950s and 60s, this natural marvel faded into obscurity, overshadowed by cheaper plastics that promised progress. Today, Ventile still exists, used quietly in survival jackets, bushcraft gear, and polar explorer clothing. But you don't need a factory to understand or even replicate its principle. If you want to make your own Hyao Pi style waterproof cloth, start with the tightest weave cotton or linen you can find, 300 to 400 threads per inch. You can enhance its resistance naturally with a boiled linseed oil and beeswax mix, about 10 parts oil to one part wax. Soak, stretch, and dry the fabric under tension for several days. It won't swell like ventile, but it'll shed water, breathe, and last for decades. A sustainable alternative to plastic tarps. What makes this story extraordinary isn't just the cloth itself. It's the mindset behind it. In an age of war, engineers weren't chasing convenience. They were chasing durability. They didn't ask, how can we make it cheaper? They asked, how can we make it last longer? And that's a philosophy worth remembering. Ventile represents a kind of design thinking almost lost today. One where survival, not speed, drove innovation. Every thread of this fabric tells a story of human endurance. It reminds us that the greatest technologies don't always sparkle or buzz. Sometimes they simply work. From the skies over the Atlantic to the jungles of Burma, this unassuming cloth gave soldiers a shield against nature's fury. And even now, when modern gear fails in silence, Ventile still performs. Proof that true innovation doesn't age, it endures. If you found this exploration of wartime innovation fascinating, subscribe to Forgotten Survival for more forgotten stories of survival, engineering, and human ingenuity. Because the past still holds the blueprints for resilience, and sometimes the greatest lessons are woven, not written.